What's up, YouTube? We're going to go through my knife collection today. <clears throat> um, we'll just start it off with uh, Spider Co. So we're going to go Spider Co. PM2. Uh, this particular one's in S45VN. And it's got uh, full brass uh, titanium lotus scales on it. Or sorry, it's got brass <laughs> It's got brass lotus flytanium scales on it and uh, this is one of my favorite knives uh, out of the box this blade is the sharpest one I own so I don't know if that has something to do with the fact that it's S45VN or just um, they just happen to sharpen this really well but uh, this knife is insanely sharp Let's, do I have something to cut here here. It's, uh, you can't really tell from me just cutting that piece of paper, but uh, the PM2 in S45VN is insanely sharp. And so that's my PM2. Uh, as far as spider codes go, this is my favorite knife ever. This is my smock, um, also in flytanium brass scales. Uh, they're not lotus, so they're not textured or anything, but uh, I, I love this knife. It, it's so fantastic. I wish that I had a stock smock uh, that I could show you the weight difference, because this weighs a lot, but uh, if you like if you like your knives to have some weight to them, um, this is definitely a plus. If you don't, and you go with uh, titanium flytanium scales, um, you know, equally as cool, equally as awesome, just lighter. So that's the smock. Uh, Spider Co. Okay. Uh, heavily modified. This is my Spider Co. Shaman. Uh, probably one of my favorite uh, blade shapes uh, out of all of my knives. Uh, this is in CPM S30V. Um, this this blade was very sharp out of the box as well. Not not quite to the degree of the the PM2, but just ridiculously amazing. So um, I took off the original G10 scales and I added these. Uh, full zirconium uh, so black zirconium scales black zirconium polished backspacer uh, the original backspacer that comes in the knife is about this long so this adds quite a bit of uh, coverage here to the back it's very nice uh, this this knife what is this way this knife weighs at an absolute ton it's uh, it's pretty crazy let's see what it weighs uh, it's in grams. Let's find ounces here. There we go. Weighs almost eight and a half ounces. Uh, I think originally it it weighed around five or six or something like that. The, the zirconium is very heavy, um, but this knife looks fantastic now uh, I, I I originally got a full set of these black titanium uh, hardware um, but once it was all on uh, I just didn't like the way that it looked I didn't like and 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 the screws didn't seem to to fit perfectly they, they fit and they screwed in but it just didn't uh, they didn't feel secure I'm, I'm not sure I, I forget where I got those screws uh, I think it was some Etsy store or something, so, um, whatever. I kept the pivot, because the pivot seemed to work better than the original factory pivot, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but I'm, I, I think this knife is done. Um, great knife. So, in terms of spider Spyderco's, I think that's the end. Um, I, I gave away, uh... Uh, one of my budget spider co's and uh, every time I bring that up the guy I gave it to keeps trying to give it back to me and I'm like it was a gift I'm not gonna take it back if I can spend this much on a knife 
I'm not, I don't, I don't need my, my $50 spider co back, but that knife, um, uh, the model name escapes me right now, but, uh, a, a fantastic user as well. The the budget spider co's really are worth it. Uh despite the fact that they're not um not as amazing as the full price like the expensive spider co's. Uh the budget ones are totally worth it. Um All right, what are we going to move on to here? Let's see. We'll do um We'll do a couple Civivis. My knives are kind of spread out, so there's going to be breaks between the manufacturers. Um, here's one of my favorite knives. This is the Spyderco, um, or sorry, the Civivi Conspirator uh, in black micarta. The blade is Nitro V. Uh, this came crazy sharp out of the package as well. Uh, it's a button lock, plunge lock, whatever. Uh, this is a very fidgety knife. Um, yeah. Um, on the Spyderco Smock, as well as this and a few other knives, I've added these cheap little um, made-in-China thumb studs. They just, uh, they have a groove, and you slide them over the blade, and then you tighten this against the blade. And it's just like a cheap thumb stud addition. They work really well. The only problem is, is that uh, they strip really easily. So once, I, once I've gotten most of these that are on my knives tightened to the point where I'm, I feel safe, uh, they're stripped. That's it. They're not coming off. And if they come off, it's because I want them off so bad that I drag them off the blade. They will leave a mark. I, I, I don't care about that. Um, they're, they're on there for pure functionality. I hope they never come off because... Uh, any of the knives that I put them on are obviously knives that I wish had come with a factory thumb stud. Um, uh, when I finally pull the trigger and get a drill press, I'm going to be uh, putting thumb studs on all of my knives that don't have them. And I'll pull these things off. Um, but until then, I'm going to keep using these. I like them. Anyway, so that's the Civivi Conspirator. Uh, what do we got here? So this is definitely one of my favorite knives. The, the model itself, not even just this knife. But this is a Civivi Praxis. Um, what's the blade steel on this? Is it the... One sec. Yeah. 9CR18 MOV. So all this blade steels with all the crazy numbers and long names, they're all like... Uh, Chinese versions of uh, really quality uh, American blade steels. <clears throat> um, and a lot of people scoff at uh, these Chinese steels, but um, anything above uh, 8CR is, is really good steel. This is good steel. Uh, 9CR18 MOV. So it's, uh, the scales here are brushed copper. Uh, it makes this knife weigh an absolute ton. Um, maybe we'll compare it when I get to my other Praxises. Um, this knife is fantastic, though. The action is unreal. The bearings are so smooth. I think this is pretty much drop shut. Let's see. Yeah. It, like, you, you don't understand the smoothness of this knife until you have it in your hand. But this knife is unreal. Uh, all of the Praxises are. They're, uh, whether it doesn't matter what the scales are, um, I have three of these knives. Uh, they're all fantastic. Um, so in this part of the case, I think that, oh no, so uh, continuing with Civivi, we've got an Elementum here in frag titanium with a milled clip. Um, his knife is fantastic. Great action uh good size it's it, it it's a this is like a perfect size for an edc knife uh, I, I tend to prefer larger knives so the majority of my knives in my collection are are bigger um but in terms of just like utilitarian use um saving space in the pocket and everything the the elementum is is a fantastic size it's a it's a great knife to have 
and uh, in this frag titanium, it's pretty unreal. What's the blade steel here? I think it's D2. This knife actually says nothing, like the blade has nothing written on it, which is... Oh, no, there it is, it's D2. You can't, see, it probably won't show up on video here, but it's written right on, oh, you can almost see it. Right there, it's D2. Uh, but a fantastic knife. Just, just great, looks great. I use this for a dress knife. Um, like if I was uh, going to a nice affair or something, like a dinner or a wedding or something, this would be one of the knives I would have on me. Uh, I think it just looks beautiful. Um, let's see here, what have I not got? Oh, I missed a Spyderco. Uh, this is another Spyderco smock, but this is in uh, oil slick black zirconium, uh, milled clip, and the zirconium scales. The oil slick is the color changing effect you get here. Just like oil or gas or whatever has that rainbow effect. I hope this is showing up on video because it's very beautiful. Uh, I put one of those thumb studs on this as well as the other smock. Um, blade steel for this is S30V, CPM S30V. So it's powder formed, uh, great blade steel and uh, sharp as hell. This is a fantastic knife. This is the only knife that I refuse to carry because the the whole oil slick um, element of these scales make every scratch show up. And uh, I, I think they're so beautiful. I just, it's the only knife I, I don't carry. Here and there, I'll put it in my pocket, but I usually have a backup knife with me and anything I need to do that's rough at all. Uh, I use the backup knife for, but that's that small. Uh, that's the end of my spider coes. Um, I got a couple Kaisers here. So this is another dress knife, uh, similar to the the frag pattern uh, Civivi um, Elementum. This is a Kaiser Mini Beg Lighter. Um, blade steel is M three ninety. This is a very premium knife despite its size. So it's uh, frag pattern titanium uh, scales with a milled uh, pocket clip as well. Um, no backspacer, it's all standoffs, but I, I, t I tend to prefer standoffs over backspacers. I like the skeletonized look. Uh, this is a great little dress knife. Very smooth action. Very smooth. And you want to see that again? Like, this is for a, a blade that weighs nothing, it should not close like that, but it does because Kaiser is a genius and they made this one of the smoothest knives that I've ever held. Um, if this was bigger, I would it would be mind blowing to me. I love this knife, my other dress knife. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, here's another Kaiser. This is the Beglighter XL. This was a White Mountain Knives exclusive. Sadly, it only came in this brown micarta, but this micarta feels really nice. The texturing on this is uh, unreal. It's It feels great in the hand. Kind of an ugly pocket clip, just like your standard uh, Kaiser stamped out clip, but it, it works really well. Otherwise, I would have switched it by now had I been able to find one for it. Uh, blade steel on this is 154 cm. Uh, great, uh, great edge retention on this. Uh, haven't sharpened a single one of these knives. So before you ever ask in the comments, not not one of my knives in my collection has needed sharpening yet. Maybe one or two of them are getting kind of close, but uh, not yet. Uh, button lock as well. This is one of the most fidgety knives that I own. This is just, it's just unreal. I actually have a second one of these still in the box because I bought it after having this knife for a few months because I just loved it so much and I was like, oh, if I ever fuck this knife up, I got a backup. <laughs> um, this thing is great. I love this knife. It's not as flashy, it's not as, like, 
special as a lot of my other knives, but uh, this is up there in my like top five, I think. What else? Is, what else have I not covered here? This knife. This is We Knives Vision R. At first glance, this knife seems amazing, and it has all the potential to be a great knife. Uh, there is a massive flaw with this knife, though. So anyone who cares about stuff like this, I suggest you do not buy this because it'll drive you nuts. Um, it operates sort of like a Demco shark lock. Um, you pull back on this piece of metal. I put one of those thumb studs on here because the piece of metal you pull down on is actually like very pointy and it's not very comfortable whatsoever. So I put that on there, it really mitigates that. Um, blade steel on this knife. Is there anything written here? Yeah, CPM 20 CV. Uh, so really good blade steel. So here's the thing about this knife. The way this locking mechanism works, you can kind of see through the hole here. This piece of metal, right, uh, blocks part of the blade. That's how it locks up. So it, it's similar to the way a shark lock works, but uh, different nonetheless. So here's the downside to this knife. When you actuate this lock, if you pull back, the whole locking mechanism comes out of the knife and the blade becomes just a free drop, dangerous, fling around, uh, nonsensical thing. And yeah, it's really easy to re-engage, right? Like if it comes out, you just have to get the blade open all the way and then get that back in there and right. But it's really easy to screw up. See, I just did it. I wasn't even trying to. Um, it's it's actually very dangerous. It's a very cool knife. And if you um, are careful, it works really well. But I don't like things that I have to like... Uh, what's the words? Like, um, like, be so mindful of... I love the way it works, and if there was something that stopped the locking mechanism from coming out like this, then this would be in my, it would be in my top five. It, it weighs nothing, it's a fantastic knife, the, the anodization on the, on the scales is pretty cool, it's like, um, uh, bead blasted and then anodized, so it has this very cool effect. The hardware on this is like a bright blue anodized. It's it's very beautiful. Uh, the pivot, the body screw, the pocket clip oddly is like this instead of like a normal pocket clip, right? Being on the side like that, uh, they they put it along the spine of the the handle. So it fits in your pocket differently than any other knife. It, it, this is this thing is very unique. It's a very cool knife. Which is the only reason why I haven't sold it yet. Because it's an interesting piece in the collection. It's, it's a conversation piece um, for sure. Everyone loves this knife. Until they realize the way that it works. <laughs> and then it becomes kind of frustrating. Uh, okay, the last thing in this layer of my case is my Demco 80 20.5s in, uh, in aluminum scales, uh, aluminum textured scales. Uh, so this one, this one is my favorite scale set. I love this finish. Um, this has a black titanium deep carry pocket clip the original pocket clips well I have them here but and, and you can look them up they're very ugly and they're not deep carry which is why I added this um, and I got both blade shapes so I got the clip point and I got the shark's foot um, and these scales are a little bit different they're more of an aggressive well they're not aggressive actually the texturing on this is is 
it seems like it would be really aggressive and bitey. Um, it's not actually. It feels very smooth despite the fact that it's completely textured. Um, and uh, sadly, I strip, uh, stripped the screws for the pocket clip. So right now, this thing just doesn't have a pocket clip on it. This is just a drop in my pocket uh, kind of knife. Uh, these ones, these these Demcos, they're in uh, S35VN. Uh, great blade steel. Um, I love these knives. These are... The Demco 80 20.5 is in my top five knives as well. Um, out of my collection, they're fantastic. Um, the thumb studs, the placement couldn't be better. It feels like just so natural. You just, you know, it's they're they're great. These these knives are fantastic, and just these these aluminum scales are so beautiful. Like I like I wish they were titanium, but. Uh, they weigh nothing because they're aluminum and they're just they're they're beautiful scales so i very much love these knives um okay that's almost there's one more knife uh this knife <clears throat> i'm very proud of this is my zt0562 the coloring you see here is custom done by me uh, I heat anodize these scales to give this uh, this look. Uh, before I did that, they, it was just straight brushed titanium. Um, and I heated it up with a map gas torch and uh, dropped the scales into ferric chloride, which uh, brought out this anodizing effect. Um, this is a one of a kind knife, so Despite the fact that this knife was very expensive when I first bought it, this is now one of a kind. There is not a single other 0562 that will look exactly like this. And most people wouldn't have the balls to take their almost $500 knife and cook it with a map cast torch and drop it into ferric chloride out of fear of destroying it. And let me tell you, I was definitely afraid that I would ruin it but this came out better than anything I've tried to heat anodize. Um, this knife is absolutely gorgeous. Um, you would think this is a safe queen. No, this is a regular user for me. I love this knife. I will use it until it's destroyed and then I'll buy another one. <laughs> but it's a ZT, so good luck destroying it. I'll probably have this knife forever. Uh, so that's everything in the first layer of the collection. Let's see here, if I can't, all right, what's next here? So, um, here's another Civivi Praxis. This one is in, I forget the type of wood. I do not remember for the life of me what this kind of wood is called, but yeah, this is another Civivi Praxis and, uh, the blade steel is a Damascus. Uh, Civivi, <sighs> I wish they would polish these after they um, treated the Damascus. Uh, they etch it so that the, the higher pieces of metal go darker and the lower pieces stay uh, more of a satin finish. Um, it might be the opposite way. I, I can't remember how it works, but uh, they they need to polish this a bit at the end because the contrast of the black and the satin is it kind of makes it look a little cheap it, it's not bad damascus it's it's good damascus but uh they make it look kind of gas stationy um but it sort of fits with the, the the other colors that go with this the the wood and stuff like that so again it has those same thumb studs I added to this knife. I think all of my Praxises, uh, yeah, they all have these thumb studs on them uh, because I think this knife just generally should have had thumb studs to begin with. Um, but yeah, that's that Praxis. Uh, we'll finish the Civivi Praxises with uh, this one. So the three Praxises that I have are 
this copper brushed copper one this wooden one with the damascus and this uh black g10 and a black blade um blade steel on this also is the same as the brushed titanium one this is also 9 cr 18 mov again great great blade steel uh these are very sharp um when i originally got these uh the first one that i got had these gold liner black g10 scales um but it had this satin blade on it right uh then i got the wood one, uh, and the wood one originally came with this black blade on it, and then I got this black one, which originally came with these with the Damascus blade. Um, but I thought that it made more sense this way, so I opened them all up and I uh, I switched them all um, to be this way. So black with black, wood with Damascus, and the copper with the satin finish blade. And I think it just looks a lot better like that. So that's all my Praxises. What else is in here? Uh, the Miguron Valona. This is a straight up budget knife. Um, it's just G10 scales. Um, whoops. Uh, G10 scales. I don't know what this is. It's like a lubricant or something I've got on here. I'll, I'll wash that off later. Uh, this is, this, before tax is a $47 knife somehow. This is huge. This is like a four inch blade. Um, liner lock, uh, blade steel is, uh, 14C28N. I actually don't know much about that steel whatsoever. Um, uh, but again, it's a budget knife. It, it probably isn't the greatest blade steel. It's probably up there around uh, the quality of like D2 or something like that. But again, this was before tax, 47 bucks. Um, this knife is a great full-size knife. You really get a, a good purchase on the handle. Um, it doesn't have any jimping on the back of the blade, but uh, the finish is very not sticky uh you just really feel like you've got a good hold of it this is a great budget knife and the action of this knife is also ridiculous i don't know if that matters to you guys but this is completely drop shut this is for a 47 dollar knife this is worth its weight in gold this is a great great knife uh, what else we got here i got another kaiser uh, this is the the Kaiser Hiccup. Uh, it's a very weird name. Let's see if we can get that to show up. Yeah. Uh, they spelled it kind of weird with it's hyphenated Hiccup. Uh, blade steel on this is one fifty four cm. I don't know if you can make that out there. Probably not. But trust me. Um, button lock. Uh, paper, black paper micarta scales. They feel really nice. This is a fantastic knife. It's just, I wish it was a little bit bigger and I would carry it more often. I can't remember the, the blade length of this is, yeah, cutting edge comes in like pretty much right at three inches. So it's not small. It just, it feels small because of the way it's constructed. I'm not sure, but, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I really like this knife as well. The, and the action is very smooth. Uh, as for most button locks or whatever. Uh, what else is here? So, oh. Uh, got uh, one more Civivi. Another Elementum. Uh, I got it to match this Praxis. So they're both uh, Damascus steel blades. This is completely false shut as well. Um, yeah, I just, I wanted them to match. So it's like the big and little brother. Civivi Praxis, Civivi Elementum, in wood with Damascus. Uh, so they're a great pair there. Uh, you know, these are kind of dressy as well. So this would be maybe something I would, I would carry to like a wedding or a dinner or something. 
of that nature. Um, okay, this here's here's a an Ontario Rat Two. Uh, forget the blade steel. Oh, it's okay. So it's just D two. I got I picked this with uh, carbon fiber scales and uh, D two blade. I got this just as a size comparison for videos. Although I haven't done too many reviews that were done the way like other guys do it like Shabazz and uh, Metal Complex and stuff um, I need to get into doing full on reviews and I'm going to do that with all these knives um, eventually so you guys will see those coming up soon but that's uh, Ontario Rat 2 um, here's a knife that I heat anodized and I don't know I don't think I did a great job um I don't like the way the colors came out, and I don't think I ever should have tried to heat anodize this because of the texturing. I tried to order uh, a replacement for this and just leave it as is uh, with straight titanium instead of anodizing it. Um, but it got held at the border, and I'll never see that knife. And I've completely given up on on ordering knives from from the states i'm not going to do it anymore because i'm i'm not okay with my knives getting held at the border um there are ways to get the money back there are ways to get the knives shipped back to the supplier but uh i hate snail mail and i'm just not going to do it i'm just not going to order knives from the states anymore uh but this is a qsb penguin in jig titanium um I'll I'll throw the supplier into the uh, into the description of this video because I cannot remember it right now, um, but it's an exclusive with them, so you can't find this jig titanium on a QSB Penguin Plus anywhere else, uh, but them. But uh, I'll I'll link that in the description. Uh, really unique knife here. This is a Finch knife. Um, it's called the Buffalo Tooth. It's it. I had to buy this knife. It is such a weird little wide blade. Um, totally satin finish with this these wood inlays. Um, very cool logo right in the center there, the Finch logo. Um, I think this knife is so cool. A lot of people don't like it, but I... Oh, and the action on this is uh, totally unreal totally drop shut as well it's a this is a great knife um, a lot of people think this is ugly I think this knife is absolutely beautiful um, but that's the buffalo tooth by Finch the blade steel on this is 154 cm so a great steel there uh, fantastic knife what else is here? Okay, here's two other knives that I heat anodized myself. Uh, I got more of a um, subtle effect on these. Uh, they're growing on me. I do like the effect, but uh, the effect that I got on the 0562 was just so much more vibrant and deep. Um, that I, I I like the effect on the 0562 so much more. Uh, this one came out pretty interesting. The blues are pretty epic. It, it doesn't do it justice on video. In person, these these do look much better than than they look on video. Um, but this is a QSB Penguin uh, blade steels 154 cm. Uh, this is a Kaiser Beg Lighter. Um, titanium scales uh, blade steel on this is s35 vn uh, interesting blade shape i like this this is very nice i'm just not a big fan of how narrow this knife is uh, pretty drop shut as well uh, it just doesn't feel as safe in my hand it, i don't feel like i have like uh, quite a as much a purchase on this knife totally drop shut both of these knives are phenomenal I don't think the penguin is like that. Oh, no, no, that she's a drop shutter too. Yeah. Um, so, oh, okay, that's everything in this layer except for 
my petrified fish beluga. When I ordered this, I thought this had a flipper tab on it, and I really wish that it did because I can barely, like I cannot, so it's a front flipper, but I can't do this quickly. Like it's very awkward for me to do. Uh, blade steel on this is, uh, is K110. Um, it's the only knife I have in that blade steel. I don't know anything about that blade steel. This blade shape on the other hand is fantastic. Um, the fuller here, which is supposed to make it not matter that it's a front flipper, is kind of hard to get your fingers into. It works, but uh, I don't know. I fail this knife a lot. Yeah, it seems to be working pretty well today. This is a great full size knife. This is a this is a really big blade. Let's see. What does this come in at? It's almost a four inch cutting edge. Uh, it's pretty much there. This is a, this is a big knife. Uh, you know, at first I really liked the the blue denim micarta, um, but it's not. I'm not, I'm not not actually a big fan. Kind of wish it was just black or uh, totally drop shut as well. I, I kind of forgot how many of my knives are fully drop shut. Uh, okay, and this is coming to the end of the collection now. The bottom layer of this uh, of this case is more stuff. Um, that I would never normally carry or or is just too big or weird or whatever uh, one of the knives in this bottom layer this is my first uh, this is the knife that got me into knife collecting I've had this knife for I want to say almost 20 years it's a SOG uh, does it have a name a SOG fielder um, I'm not sure they make these anymore. They might, but they might look different. Um, the screws on this knife are stripped. I can't open this knife up anymore. Uh, but this was like my trusty, um, you know, carry piece for many years before I had any of these other knives. Uh, I had this and uh, this knife is still great. Somehow, the action of this knife is still very smooth. Um, it's not really a drop shot blade anymore. Um, if I could clean it out and oil it up, it, it would be. Um, it's a great knife. Uh, I've had it for a long time, and I am hope to have it redone, like refinished by some kind of professional one day, and pass that on to my son, because this knife has served me well, and it's... It's a great knife, very trusty. It needs to be sharpened though. What else is in here? Okay, here is, all right, well, okay, so here is a CJRB Pyrite in, um, in titanium, uh, button lock, and the blade steel is uh, AR RPM, What's the number there? Nine? I can't, I can't really see it. Uh, very sharp blade. Uh, very smooth action. Like, it's just, you know, if this is a great knife. Anyway, um, I had to rebuy it. This is my second one. This was the first one. I tried to heat anodize, and it just came out these ugly colors. It's got smudges on it. I didn't clean it off properly before I heat anodized it. Um, action is still great uh, on this knife um, but after this came out like this and uh, I don't know if any of you have heat anodized or electrically anodized stuff you can remove the anodization you can just sand this off and totally redo it um, and I'm gonna do that with this knife I'm gonna reheat anodize this um, along with some other stuff and try to get it right um, but that, that'll be an experiment for another day. I'll definitely film that and uh, talk about the process of that again. Uh, but I do have some other videos. If you're interested in heat anodizing, I, I did some basic videos, a two-part series. And you can check that out and see how that's done. Uh, I did the whole thing on video, so 
you can see that. So that's uh, my CJRB Pyrite. This is usually a backup knife, this particular one. And I'll throw in a knife that I think, or whatever, I'll, th I'll throw a knife in one pocket that's like a bigger knife that's like really workable. And then this is usually my backup on like a day to day. Um, also, oh, there's another QSB Penguin in here in green micarta. It's just in the bottom layer because there's nothing really like special about this knife or whatever. But it's a QSB Penguin. Blade steel is D2. Um, trusty, good backup knife as well. Whoops. Um, is, the QSP Penguins are just, they're great knives. No matter what, they're just they're just good. But this is just kind of like a boring knife. Just green micarta, D2 steel, whatever. Um, here's a Sencut. Uh, what's the name of this? Sencut what? I, I, I can't remember what this model is. If, if, if any of you guys remember, maybe you just throw it in the comments there. Um, button lock as well. The this particular button lock has a little bit of stick um it might i i feel like i took it apart and put it back together a little funky so maybe i'll break this knife down on camera it was kind of frustrating to put back together so maybe i screwed something up but there's a little bit of stick and grit uh in this plunge lock um but this is a really just well designed knife uh, blade steel on this is probably D2. Can't seem to see it written anywhere here. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's D2 because it's uh, this is a budget knife, no matter what. This is if any uh, for those of you who don't know, Sencut is like uh, the budget line, the very budget line of like Wii and Civivi. Um. But yeah, this is a, you know, for the, this was a budget knife. This was like 50 something bucks or something for the money. This is a great knife. Uh, no complaints other than a little bit of button stick. Okay, now we get into um, some, some larger weird stuff. So this is my uh, CRKT... Uh, provoke. Um, this is a folding, what's the style of this knife again? Um, oh, I can't remember. You guys would, would know and you can throw that in the comments as well. Um, yeah, so it's just a very interesting method of deployment, you know? Um, very smooth. Um, it's just a really interesting knife. I paid way too much for this knife because I just, even though I'm never going to really carry this, I just wanted it in my collection as like a weird piece. Uh, blade steel on this is not written on the blade, actually. Huh. Okay, just some serial numbers and things like that. Uh, but it's an interesting knife nonetheless. Okay, then I got uh, some big boys. I just wanted some big overbuilt knives uh, on a budget, and these two fit that uh, very well. So this is a, a Kaiser Sheepdog XL. Uh, blade steel on this is 154 cm. Oh, this blade is very dirty. I don't know if how well, uh, it doesn't really show up that well, so that's good. Uh, green G10, 154 cm blade steel. Uh, love the pivot collar. Uh, I don't know if blue was the right choice, but they did that. But it's it's really nice anyway. Um, I've got some scales, some carbon fiber. Um, scales coming in for this because although at the beginning I really liked these green G10s they uh they've faded and dried out and have this ugly look to them now uh same with this knife 
Um, so yeah, I've got some sort of from uh, composite designs, uh, some carbon fiber uh, polished uh, knife scales for this are on the way. Uh, the action on this knife is unreal. Totally drop shot. I mean, like, as per use with a blade that heavy, uh, it closes up uh, just beautifully. Uh, it's a great knife. For a full-size knife, you go going camping, you need to break some stuff down a lot, or you just got, like, a ton of cardboard to, like, break down before recycling day at your house or something. This is just, like, a fantastic, workable knife. Um, you know, I've used this while cooking and stuff. I'm a chef, so this, this is actually just, like, a really useful knife for a lot of stuff. Uh, in terms of overbuilt, this thing, uh, it's an artisan cutlery, what's the model of this? Uh, it's a Pinkerton knife. I can't remember what this is called. The name is right on the tip of my tongue. Um, this has, uh, so the blade steel on this is D2 as well. Uh, most of these overbuilt knives with huge blades, it's usually D2 steel just to keep the cost down on the knife. Uh, this thing is a tank. Uh, the, the liner lock for this is really hard to engage. Like I have to use the nail in my finger. I can't, like I can barely push it over just with the meat of my finger. But uh, if I use my nail, it's 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 a bit easier. Uh, this blade came very sharp. Um, this thing is a tank. It's just hard to close. Um, and because of the blade shape, the tip is a little delicate. Um, even though look, it's that thick, you know. But uh, it's an interesting knife to say the least. Anyway, that's uh. Unless there's anything in my pockets. Nope. That's the... That's that's my whole collection there so far. Um, I'm hoping to be partnering up with a, a, a knife store um, that's in Etobicoke here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm in Canada. Uh, I live in, in Newmarket, which is about, I don't know, like half an hour away from Toronto. Uh, there's a knife store, a, an amazing knife store... Uh, I'll plug them. They're, they're SNR Knives. They're in Etobicoke. And I think they have another store uh, more downtown on like Bay Street or something like that in, in the core of Toronto. Uh, but SNR Knives are my go-to for, uh, for knives. And now that I'm not ordering anything from, uh, from the U.S., <clears throat> uh, SNR Knives is my go-to. I'm trying to work out... Uh, a little sponsorship with them so that I can uh, borrow some knives uh, to to feature on this state on this channel uh, so that I don't have to buy everything uh, because I'm obviously not made of money um, and I, I just I, I, I need I need knives to be uh, I need to borrow knives and, and, and not buy them all um, because cost effectively it's just not a, I mean I'm, I'm sure you guys know how much knives tend to cost and it does just get quite pricey to, to buy everything for a channel to review um, so SNR knives in Etobicoke I'm gonna try to get them to sponsor me um, We'll see what happens. I might go talk to them today or tomorrow and try to get that done. But I got a lot of stuff going on right now. So I'm going to carry this today. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my collection so far. Uh, I'm going to do a bunch of reviews of, uh, of all of these individual knives so that I can give you all the information about them. Um, but that was just a quick look at all the knives in my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah, uh, have a great day, guys. And, uh, you know, uh, subscribe if you like what you're seeing because there's a lot more content on the way. Take care, guys.